the back, another dish. How we doing out there? Good, great, grand, and yand, and yand, yand. Wonderful. Take forty-two for this one, because I'm the worst produced show in the business. <laughs> As you see on your screen, your dial, however you're joining me today, I thank you, appreciate you. You know I do. You know I do. Uh, more taste. Oh, those of you that um, uh, play the drinking game for every time I miss, I, I mispronounce something. Better get ready. This one's gonna be you're gonna be hammered by the time this episode's over. <laughs> Morte suspetta di una minorene, minorene. I am unclear. Um, the suspicious death of a minor. So we're closing out the three part series, as I told you, with the, the another Sergio Martino. Uh, I don't want to say Giallo. I oh my god, I don't want to say Giallo. It's it it's start. That's becoming too widespread. <laughs> This is an action comedy thriller of sorts. Are there giallo elements? Sure, you know, but this had come back. Uh, this had come after the boom, I think, right? And uh, I, I really enjoyed it. It was a very polished, very polished crime yarn. I thought um, another screen pl- uh, screenplay by Ernesto Gastaldi. <clears throat> Mentioned him the last two times. Uh, produced by his brother again, Luciano Martino, starring Claudio Casanelli, who plays the... It, I don't think they specifically say he's a cop. They also loot him. But, like, I, I thought that he was just part of this undercover um, kidnap, trying to find kitty and drug rings, kitty prostitute rings. And, and we, we don't talk about him. He's not on... Well, never mind. It's, but he, he, is, he is affiliated with the police. Um, But it is cool when that turn happens. I really thought uh, the arc of his character was awesome. Um, At first, I I love what Martino does sometimes where, like, everyone's a suspect, which is, you know, that's cliche to say in Giallo, but I didn't think much of him in the beginning sequence and, and how wonderfully executed it is. And then before you know it, I was like, oh, shit, he's the main character because they... Um, Paolo, played by Claudio Casanelli, and the mysterious Marissa meet each other at a dance hall. Jeremy is unaware of the secret Marissa carries with her. Adverse conditions in her life have forced her into prostitution. As Jeremy finds the young girl brutally murdered, he decides to go after the killers. During his investigation, he enters a world of intrigue and uh, leaves an endless trail of blood. Endless trail of blood. Uh, more in your face. Oh, actually, you know what? Not in your face. A much more subtle delivery with uh, Giancarlo's, uh, uh, Giancarlo Ferrando's cinematography. Much more subtle than the last two, which kind of, I, oof. <laughs> I mean, we just overused some things. So if you listen to the last couple episodes, we just overused some things. You feel me? Um. In, in the wake of the success of uh, Dario Argento's groundbreaking Giallo, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, uh, numerous other directors step forward to try their hand in these lurid, lurid, lurid murder mysteries. At the forefront was Sergio Martino, third part series, or third and final, The Closer, whose sensual 70s thrillers starring Edwidge Fennec and George Hilton are widely celebrated as some of the best the genre has to offer. The final of Martino's Six Gialli. It's an action comedy with a little, some thrillers, a thriller in Manila. But mm. <clears throat> the suspicious death of a minor combines conventional Giallo trappings with elements of the then flourishing uh, crime thrillers. Because we had we had gone away from the um, uh, spaghetti westerns and then kind of these trashy horror films. We were starting to get a, a little away from that and. We were kind of ushering a little bit maybe cleaner, more sophisticated plot. Um, and yes, way less trashiness in this one as opposed it, This one's polished. This one just got a nice little shine. Got a wax coat on it. Um, Claudio Casanelli uh, stars as an undercover cop, Paolo Jeremy, on the trail for a Mil- Milanese criminal outfit following the brutal murder of an underage prostitute. Which from the beginning, I actually thought she was going to be, that's, you know, testament to Sergio Martino and how he executes. I thought the the lady was going to be around for a while that we were following in the beginning. And nope, instead she becomes the heart of the investigation. Investigation. 
Oh no! If it's English, you have to. If if I keep fucking up the English, you have to drink twice. If I'm fucking up the Italian, you only have to drink once. Um. Anyway, he's uh yeah after after the brutal murder of an underage prostitute, but a killer for hire is also on the prowl, bumping off witnesses before they have the chance to talk with his reflective sunglasses and his long blonde hair and his mad face throughout the entirety. It was well executed, actually. Uh, also starring Mel Ferrer from Nightmare City, Barbara Magnolfi, Barbara Magnolfi from Suspiria, and Jenny Tamburi from The Psychic, and featuring a script by, as said before, veteran giallo writer Ernesto Gastaldi. The unique and lesser-known entry in Martino's filmography serves in an, as an essential link between two movements in Italian film pop culture. Yeah, so pop culture. So we had, like, you know, like I said, the Marvel Universe before it was a thing, where the characters, right before a knife fight, are watching a movie, and the movie is your vice... There's a locked room, and only I have the key. Some of you would say that that's shouldn't do that. Well, I say you're wrong. I say you're wrong. Um, from the jump on this one, I had a good time. Uh, it, I love how I was hooked where uh, the score by uh, Luciano Michelini. Yeah, Luciano Michelini, not Bruno uh, Nicolai from the last two. Uh, Luciano Michelini. Um, his score is playing like this girl that I thought was going to be the lead. The score is playing and, uh, you can't hear the conversation because the score is playing, um, so loud, but it's clearly an argument, an argument between her and an old man, an old man. And we begin our descent into darkness where she gets her throat cut. Now we got to find out why, who, who going to do it? Who did it? Who does it? Um, I, the comedic elements in this, like the broken glasses, I thought they worked even, even when it was kind of after like an oh shit scene. So our, uh, main character, uh, wears glasses, uh, Claudio Casanelli, who plays Paolo, Paolo, uh, wears glasses. Actually, who else? We got this, uh, Mel Ferrer as the police superintendent, Lea Tanzi as Carmela, Gia, uh, Gia Franco as Bar, uh, Gia Franco Barra as Teti, Patrizia Castaldi as Marissa, she gets bumped off into the, very striking woman, um, a great character, Adolfo Caruso, who plays Giannino, uh, the cop, so, uh, Paolo and Giannino actually become friends, even though he's a thief, He's a goddamn thief. In fact, he picked off one of the uh, other police inspector's uh, wallet and bag earlier in the film. And then they become friends on the case. And he's helping him out. And it, I actually thought underrated performance by uh, uh, Hamana, 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 Adolfo Caruso. Underrated performance. To say it right now, they, that thrown by the wayside. Whatever happened to him? I should have googled it beforehand. See whatever happened, old boy. Because I thought his, maybe the film would have been less fun if uh, his presence wasn't there. I said it. I said it even. <laughs> Dude, this is going to be kind of a spoiler. Just because one of the most off-guard moments I've been, uh, <laughs> been in, in, in film uh, the last, I don't know, few months. Where I was like, oh, shit. Um, Adolfo. Spoiler alert, uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> spoiler alert. Uh, he is uh, riding out on his moped, his Vespa. With This is towards the end of the film, too. Uh, no, I shouldn't do it. Nope. He pulls back the reins. <laughs> a Vespa riding with a girl. She's got a gift. And it just <laughs> blew my mind. <laughs> I was just like, hey, whoa, wait a minute. Because, you know, sometimes, like like I was, uh, I think I said in the past episode, I'm watching these back-to-back-to-back, right? And as aforementioned, I would uh, made the mistake of doing Twin Peaks. Uh, <laughs> I watched Twin Peaks, like, I don't know. It had to have been close to, like, two months straight. I, I had never seen the series before. Got the fucking deluxe box set, whatever, the snore. And start to finish watch it and that included the the movie and everything and you just can't do that to your brain and that's to say so with this um you know this is three giallos back to back to back um i don't know where i was going with this 
I I wasn't uh I wasn't uh upset at the end of it. I went and this is, I like the uh the old school when you just end things when it's definitively should end and then you do like a freeze frame. That's old school fucking where you just go, "Yep, it's fucking tied up." And freeze frame, we're out of here. Even though there was a couple of scenes that I may have cut just a little bit, like uh, the high-speed car chase through the streets was a little ridiculous. And as everybody knows, I am not a big fan of car chases to begin with. I just, I don't give, I'm much more into hand-to-hand combat and maybe some cool gun violence, but it's getting to the point now. Where it's, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that a film can't have it. That's not what I'm saying at all. But um, as far as, like, wowing me, like, it doesn't, it doesn't I, I'm way more... Oh, look at that. Fucking, because, you know, if you're doing hand to hand, it's more real life. And fucking, a Porsche is fucking doing a Bill 50, dodging fucking giant pipes falling off the back of a semi and shit. I just, I, 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 meh. So maybe I'm biased going into that. And, and back in the day, like, maybe I should, you know what? I should. So let's walk it back a little bit. <laughs> uh, I should respect the, uh, craziness of the stuntmen back in the day because I know for, I think he actually uh, Sergio Martinez says Martino, dude, get it right Martino says in the uh, bonus features uh, for this one he's just like, yeah, we filmed a lot of those action sequences just very unsafely one of the drivers may or may not have been drunk people are, and in fact in fact um, Claudio Casanelli actually died in one of Sergio Martino's films, <laughs> like like died real life, um, in a helicopter stunt that they were doing. The helicopter pilot was supposed to go under the bridge and fucked up, and they crashed him through the bridge and fucking died on on set. Just, whew. and you could tell uh, Sergio just definitely didn't want to talk about that in the bonus features, and I don't fucking blame him. I don't fucking blame him. Why would you want to relive that shit? And I'm sure plenty of people held you responsible. You're responsible for everything. Responsible for everything. Let's take a peek at what we got. The the serving plot line begins with a frizzy-haired young hooker being stalked during and after a wedding. Celebration by a sinister man in sunglasses who eventually catches up to her at her apartment, where he slashes her throat. Her presence has been noticed earlier by Inspector Jeremy, a not-by-the-book undercover cop who teams up with a sly thief to track both the vicious murderer and and instigators of a widespread kitty and drug uh, drug dealing ring. When not being lectured by his boss, the unstoppable cop goes un- undergoes a series of bizarre adventures, including a wild shootout on a roller coaster ride. That yeah, a wild shootout on the roller coaster ride. I I don't fucking he jumps at the fucking descent. He jumps onto a pole. It's hilar- hilarious. Um, a knife attack in the theater filled with necking lovers during a screening of Martino's Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key, and two gruesome encounters with subway trains, a fight on a roof over a theater, and much, much more. Kind of bring the theater element. If you always, you know, it's, that's pandering, but I love it. <laughs> uh, no plot synopsis can really convey the whiplash tone of this film, which never stops for a minute to rest as it ricochets between gory attack sequences not 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 super gory this is more this is more much more polished uh including one unlucky overweight victim yeah the chubby landlord bitch she's fucking mean and devious she knew she was doing what she was running out of that that prostitution house and she knew that underage people were bad but she went and did it anyway cuz she's a f- no good landlord not that all un- landlords are bad but that she this one was shit there's a brief interrogation scene that I was like, holy shit, where uh, Paolo comes up from behind her and, like, wraps a cord around her neck and holds a gun to her head and and, and gets her to talk, gets her to get some information because he's the undercover kidnap. He kind of, he's like the uh, pre-fucking Russ Cole from True Detective, looking looking out for the dead, the, the dead miners. Um, you got quirky character bits, yeah, I like the chubby girl, uh, the un- unmistakable Franca Scagnetti making brief but memorable appearance appearances, and uh, twists culminating in a suitably dark, cynical final, uh, finale. The whole thing is buoyed by Luciano Michelini's amazing music score, a rock-heavy blast clearly inspired by the same year's Deep Red. So some hamana hamana hamana, yeah, it was a good one.
would cut out a little bit of the uh but i you know what cut a little bit out of the uh the car chase sequence uh through the streets and put in a little bit more roller coaster hoopla that's what i say roller coaster hoopla cuz had i was i was just giggling having a good time having a good time um ernesto gastaldi uh, never ceases to disappoint, but I actually think uh, Sergio Martino also co-wrote this one. Could be wrong, could be wrong, but uh, I I thought it was more refined than the last two. And not to say that, I mean, clearly some of the stuff in the last two was uh, meant to be. Those were artistic choices made uh, to kind of go further when it. This one, I almost felt like it was a nice little tie-up. It was a nice little, we ride off into the sunset. Uh, not that Sergio didn't stop making films, but uh, to ride off on the Giallo sunset and go into uh, action comedies, which is, what do you know, fucking 40 years later, action comedies kind of rule, do they not? They Well, in, in terms of box office, right? In terms of box office. Who else can? Let's bring up the editor. Raimundo Crociani. This is the old school editing days, you know, where they, you see the guys hunched over on the cell, celluloid and with the cigarette fucking gluing frame by frame together. And in this one, I think stands out better in the other two um, for how sharp the editing was by Raimundo. <laughs> by Raimundo. Yeah. No, old, editing doesn't get enough props. Um, I think I was saying that on the... Uh, Threshold podcast. Um, I simply didn't reach out to William Ford Conway because editors are always working and they're always busy. I mean, and pending on where you're at in the game, you kind of, you know, while you may control your work, most most of them it's sun up to sundown. Like that's just how it is. Make your eyes bleed. But uh, in this, I mean, if if Gina, uh, I'm sorry, if Raimundo was still alive, he would be like, dude. You don't understand how easy you kids have it, <laughs> and especially for a film like this where it's so chaotic and the, the twists and turns and everything hinges on you that it's in this cognitive and <laughs> I, it's, it, I, I don't know, I, the unsung. Same with composers. Like it's another thing that the, this would maybe one if I had to nitpick the score. Which in moments is really wonderful. The the score by Luciano Michelini, in moments is really really good, but sometimes it doesn't fit the tone for me. Uh, for like the 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 amusement park the action sequence, it was just too comedic for me. And I know you know like this is fucking forty years ago, fifty years ago. Um, and I, I've seen so much that, you know, I may subconsciously just want that, dun, 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 you know, whatever, like the uh, epic fucking portal sequence sound, portal and endgame sequence sound when there's, you know, something epic's going on. But it was almost like fucking slapsticky. Com- and there is slapsticky comedy in this, too. Like the, the car that the detective drives around is a piece of shit and like. <laughs> The door doesn't work, and ultimately, in one of the car chases, he tosses the door at the uh, at the. Well, I'm not going to tell you, but because that one's kind of because you're wondering what's going on here. I didn't know at this point. This turn was great. I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it. Oh, uh, yeah, Sergio Martino. It was fun. That was fun to go the distance on those three. I. Uh, doesn't look like I'm going to be slowing down anytime soon. Anytime soon. Uh, this is on Arrow Video, or if you don't want to buy the super awesome box set, or if you like need to see it before you're going to spend that type of cash, I think most of these are on Tubi right now. T-U-B-I. For free. Tubi for free right now. So, if nothing else, stream these. But Arrow Video's release with all the bonus features that I've told you. I mean, fucking Your Vice had so many. And, I mean, if you got Eli Roth on a, on a uh, feature, you know it's dope. You know it's dope. Oh. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do it. Ellis Cinema. 
the Sergio Martino collection comes to a close on the, the third and final installment. Arrow video release. You can get it right now. Ellis Cinema. Arrow video. Right now. 